Hi, thanks for watching. I'm Chip Childers, Vice President of Product Strategy here at Cumulogic. Today we'll be walking through a technical preview of the Cumulogic Service Broker for Cloud Foundry. One of the reasons why Cumulogic has put together the Service Broker is that we believe the combination of Cloud Foundry and Cumulogic is going to offer an expanded set of architectural options for application teams and enterprise IT. More specifically, the Cumulogic belief is that applications truly deserve a high-quality, production-ready, and operationally robust back-end data, data system. This also includes things like queues and cache clusters. Cumulogic is the industry-leading multi-engine, on-premise, database-as-a-service platform. Cloud Foundry is obviously an industry leader for private paths. Just to give you a quick overview of the Cumulogic platform itself, Cumulogic is uh, a software package that orchestrates the delivery of database as a service functionality and some additional modules like an elastic cache and messaging as a service function. It's built on a foundation that allows us to deploy these types of services within private clouds on top of software such as VMware's vCloud, Citrix Cloud Platform, OpenStack, Eucalyptus, as well as pre-provisioned pools of bare metal or virtual machines. We can also offer enterprises the ability to burst out into public clouds, including Amazon, Rackspace, HP, and numerous others. At its core, our framework supports all of the common functions necessary to deliver these as-a-service capabilities. That includes things like automated operations, task scheduling, governance and role-based access control, uh, dealing with abstracting all of the underlying infrastructure details. Um, and we've built it in a way that the as-a-service modules are actually created as plugins to our core framework. Now, our four most significant plugins today are our SQL database as a service, which we'll dig into a little bit later, as well as our NoSQL, which we'll also spend a bit of time on. In addition, we support ElastiCache, uh, which are MCache clusters easily deployed by the end user through a couple of clicks or through a single request from Cloud Foundry, as well as messaging as a service functions uh, via RabbitMQ. All of our functionality is exposing a RESTful API, um, and while there's, of course, an administrator and a user um, portal that, that can be used to interact with the platform, uh, the important part here is that we'll be using that RESTful API exposed by our core platform as a way to bridge between Cloud Foundry and the Cumulogic backend services. Let's dive into the relational database service briefly. This portion of our software has been designed to create an RDS-like experience for the users. Fundamentally, it operates as a control plane that supports the provisioning, scaling, and ongoing operational support of these relational database systems. Today, we support both the MySQL and the Bracona Extra DB engines. We're able to deploy anything from a single-node MySQL database, a multi-node Bracona cluster, and even a multi-zone replicated deployment model for MySQL, which includes automated failover to the remote location. Coming soon, we'll be including both Oracle and Microsoft SQL support using the same operational model. Our NoSQL database services operate in a very similar way to the relational services. In addition, we're able to work with databases like MongoDB to take you from discrete single-node MongoDB deployments to multi-node replica sets, but more importantly to applications as they grow, we're able to create a uh, scalable shard-based infrastructure. That includes the automatic deployment of query routers in order to uh, route application contact to the appropriate shard. That includes the, also includes the configuration servers that are within each shard and the replica set nodes that, that sit within that shard. In general, across both of those two services, uh, the deployment model for Cumulogic is that we <coughs> isolate each discrete node of any particular architecture to a running virtual machine. Typically, our users tend to use us for um, complex multi-node deployments. That includes, again, clusters, replica sets, um, as well as replication topologies for uh, engines like MySQL that span multiple availability zones. Importantly, after the deployment is done, Cumulogic also manages automated failure recovery. 
And that includes cluster repair or multi-zone replication failover and potential failback. One of the more advanced features that we have is the ability to tune a particular engine for uh, any particular use case that you might have in mind. That includes being able to reach below the abstraction level uh, as a systems administrator and predefine what are called parameter groups. These parameter groups are configuration values that might specify details around a particular buffer size, cache size, max connections into the engines themselves. This is a very powerful feature when combined with uh, the way that we express our services in a lightweight service catalog and it's those service catalog items that then get exposed out to Cloud Foundry itself. Now, of course, one of the most important things to persistent data is making sure that you've got that data protected. The Cumulogic controller will automatically back up based on scheduled windows, and it also allows for on-demand backups in addition to self-service restoration. So how, does, how do the two products work together? We won't drill in very deeply into the Cloud Foundry architecture at this point, um, but what we, can, what we can say is that Cloud Foundry does a wonderful job of working with uh, discrete applications, and the app developer experience um, creates a seamless environment for an application to be coded locally, pushed into the Cloud Foundry environment, and Cloud Foundry will stage it and scale it via a couple of command line options. What Cloud Foundry also supports is the notion of a uh, remote service broker. Now this allows an application deployed by Cloud Foundry to be bound to some remote backend service. Now in the case of Cumulogic, we're supporting in this technical preview of both our relational as well as our NoSQL databases of service functions. The interaction between Cloud Foundry and Cumulogic occurs based on five discrete operations that the Cloud Controller on the Cloud Foundry side um, will perform against the service broker that Cumulogic will expose. The first is that Cumulogic will provide a catalog of predefined services. This allows a lot of the power of the Cumulogic configuration options to be codified into very specific deployment configurations that can be selected by the app developer on the Cloud Foundry platform. Once its service catalog is known to Cloud Foundry, the user is then able to request the creation of a service. That service request will cause our Cumulogic platform to provision the required database nodes, uh, perform uh, any of the steps necessary to join the nodes together into a cluster, to establish a replication plan, as well as kick off all of the scheduled tasks necessary for the ongoing monitoring and backup and support, uh, as well as health monitoring of that deployed service. Now, once an app developer has deployed that service by requesting it uh, through the cloud controller, the next thing they do is to bind it to an application that they're going to deploy or that they have deployed. That bind operation is effectively what allows the service broker to inform Cloud Foundry uh, about the details necessary for any app to connect to that backend service. And that, that includes things like the IP address or, or the host name that will be targeted by the uh, application itself. It also includes the access credentials, username and password. The unbind operation is how an application, uh, application developer is able to detach a service uh, from an application. This effectively unregisters that application's reference to the deployed service itself. And then finally, a developer can clean up after himself if he's done using that backend service and, and request a deletion of the, uh, of the service. And the service broker will take responsibility for asking the Cumulogic platform to go ahead and destroy uh, all of the nodes associated with that, uh, that deployed service. So for more information about this, uh, we welcome you to contact us at info at cumulogic.com. You can always find, more about, uh, find out more about the Cumulogic platform itself by going to cumulogic.com. And there's some specific URLs there for service broker detail, uh, as well as to get the code. Um, this broker has been uh, released via Git GitHub uh, as an open source integration. Um, in addition to the, ser the service broker itself, um, we've also released a Ruby-based client uh, that will allow uh, additional extension of the Cumulogic platform over time. Thanks for watching.